Okay, so today's day two of AIM Expo. Today I'm just going to be really quick and show you guys my favorite booths. There's somebody in there that I want to shake hands with. Hopefully he's here today, so let's go. Alright, I'm going to go surprise him. Let's go. Oh, hold on. There's, there's looks like they're shooting. Right, so if you guys don't know who that is, his name's Zach. His social media handle is Why Not Right. You may not know who that is, but you may recognize like, Saw, dude. It's gracious. Hey, Zach. What's yeah. oh, up? Dude. Dude. Nice to meet you in person. You told me you were here. Yeah, I'm here. Dude, dude. I thought you were in freaking uh, Thailand or something. Oh, I was in Thailand. Yeah, we all got back. Yeah, Brandon oh, and everyone. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, I can't believe sick. I'm meeting you in person, dude. Yeah, you look exactly the same. I'm a huge fan, bro. I'm a huge fan, bro. You look the same. You look the same. So, if you guys don't know Zach, I didn't know who he was. I was on a live stream with Mike Clutch first, and then he was on it, and I looked him up. And then, like, a couple months later, this guy said a lot of nice things about me, and that's true. We've been, like, so social media friends since then so uh, I'm glad I got to see him in person yeah, sure. finally man dude, yeah. you do not hear okay so when I when I first saw him this guy had like 19,000 followers and I saw something that he posted and I was like this guy is next level so everyone who's trying to be like an adobo moto but they didn't know how to do it and I see a genuine guy with good information doing what he's supposed to do and it's no surprise to me that you absolutely took off I saw it a mile away, and he's gapping me and everybody else, and I'm really happy for it. No, no, I'm happy yeah. for you, bro. Don't you have a clock? Don't you have a uh, course coming up too? Yes, I do. Are you interested in doing a course? I'm skeptical of the industry. I'm skeptical that the people who say they make all this money don't actually make it. I'm skeptical that paying for the course, like, I'm just, I'm doing it out of spite to prove if you can or can't, because I have a pretty big platform, and so do you. I want to know. Can you actually sell a course if you have a proof of concept? The reason I'm doing it is because people who don't know what they're doing and they don't know what they're talking about are out here making money off of people and I'm like, all right, I want to see if I can do it. That's why I'm doing it. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's out of spite. I think a lot of the things you do and a lot of things I do is a lot. It's out of spite, yeah, right? for sure. Didn't you work in the corporate world, too? I did. Yes. Same, right? So I didn't know what Adobo. I thought that was your freaking name. What the heck is Adobo? Is that a food related? Yeah. So when I was in Thailand, I saw a name. I was walking, I saw Adobo, and I was like... Adobo. So for the record, where did this name come from? Like Adobo yes. Moto. That's one of my favorite Filipino foods, right? I wanted to incorporate in my culture. I was like, okay, that's part of me, Adobo, and then Moto. Yeah, gotcha. Moto. And then I, I, I'm starting to do car shit too. Gotcha. Yeah. My best friend's Filipino. I have a lot of Filipino friends that don't take near as much pride in the Philippines as you do. Why? I'm kind of lost in my culture. So I grew up in Mexico, like with Mexico, like Mexican, a lot of Mexican influence. My life's Mexican. Yeah, yeah. All the my friends were mostly Mexican. Uh, you look Mexican. I look Mexican, yeah. right? We have a lot, a lot of me like Spanish influence. The reason I, I'm trying to embrace my Philippines is because I don't know it. I'm learning. I'm learning. My mom's teaching me a lot. Yeah. Uh, people in my comment section are teaching me a lot. I grew up here, bro. Yeah. You know, I was army. Yeah. I went to school here. Went to college here. Everything I know is, is yeah. U.S. But if you look at me, I'm, like, I'm Filipino. Yeah, sure. But it's kind of like it's kind of shitty. It's like I don't know my own culture. Yeah, sure. I don't know any. I don't know any historical facts. What was the breaking point? Because like you sound like passionate about it. It's like at what 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 was the the trigger and how long ago to when you were like I want to embrace this? My second kid. Your second kid. Yeah. You so wanted to pass that the traditions to I them. Yeah, I didn't want them to first like. They're American. Yeah. Right? They're half Mexican, half Filipino. Yeah. So they, they're faced with two different cu cultures. And then the third one being, I'm also American. Yeah. I didn't want to lose that in, that in you know, yeah. future generations for certain. I was like, if I embrace it and I, I try to teach them and they can kind of see it in the videos. Yeah. The reason kids who have immigrant parents don't know anything about their culture is because of the parents. Sure. The parents didn't try. Yeah. I know so Spanish kids don't speak Spanish. I'm like, what? Well, yeah. A lot of like Mexicans get embarrassed. Yeah. You know, or they'll get pissed off. Like, how the fuck? Like, I know a lot Mex of Puerto Ricans who can't speak Spanish. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like, how could you forget that? Dude? Yeah. It's, it's your culture, dude. Yeah. It's your culture. A, a lot of first generation children. My kids are first generation, right? They lose a lot of that culture because their parents didn't try. Yeah. yeah. She feels really bad that her kids don't know Spanish. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she, it hurts for her. Like my second child, I was like, damn. And she looks super Asian. Yeah, oh, jeez. And I said, fuck, uh, yeah. fuck me if I don't, you know, if I don't try to give you a little bit of my culture. Yeah, I want to try to get my hands on it. I mean, I, I, I said, you Will you review it? This guy. He's about to work, he's about to work at YT. That's what's happening. Yeah, yeah, I think that is what's happening. I'll have to, uh, he wears a pista. Hey, but, but uh, uh, that, look, that does look like a water dog. Yeah, a water dog. That's interesting. So, I saw, like, but you have to try first. If you hate it, that's fine. That's why I love your channel because you you never you never spoil. Yeah. Yeah. You always 
go to the point, right to the point, you know. The day that I prepped the helmet for the MotoGP racer, I trained the full lot. And I tried to check multiple times. I call the racing helmet 101. That's so sick. That is so sick. So I have to prep everything and let you try. If you like it, you like it. Not just keep me there. I think I'm not like it. Explain this part. Yeah, the safety part of this. It's very, it's, it's very important because as you know that helmet decide to absorb the impact energy, right? Once we replace the plastic to metal, we reduce the size. And, and uh, look at this. So it's stronger, it's lighter. Stronger, lighter, and smaller, smaller. And imagine that most of the problem of this plane, why the like us is the low side, not high side. Right. And uh, ima uh, and once we remove side, you see behind the mechanism inside the EPS. Yeah, it's kind of recessed. Yes. So we try to prevent this area as much as we can. If it's hit around the edge of the FRP, it's absorb all energy impact. Yeah. And you know, yeah, the uh, yeah, and the impact will go it, all yeah, over it, the helmet. It, uh, the transfer is the impact. Yes, but if it's hit to the pivot set, it's right go to your head. Yeah, yeah. Like that's, so that's smart, why. Yeah. That's amazing. What an amazing yeah, design. Dude, there's yeah. so innovative stuff. Yes. And you know, what, you know what my favorite part of this? And I'm like, the fucking price. <laughs> oh man, the yes. The fucking price, yeah, man. It starts from the six. You guys killed it with the price. It starts from 649. The reason That's is, uh, we are the headquarters. And we sell directly to the dealers, also the customer. Yeah. I think the KX1, 649, Model GP spec. In my experience is amazing. This is my favorite part right here. This rain seal. Apparently, it's uh, it's it's handmade, but it's it's specific to MotoGP. And if you look at this, like like TJ was saying, is this billet aluminum? What is this? Yes, it is. Yes, this is billet aluminum. I've never seen that in my life. And the way they designed it, um, it's actually this whole helmet just has a lot of safety in mind. And I think. Most yeah, people, was, uh, like, most people, when yeah, they look for a helmet, level, it's typically like, what is the coolest design, right? What has the best colorway? This is just white, but even in white, you can see all the technical aspects where it makes this really, really safe. And that's that's one of the main priorities that I look for in a helmet is how safe is it? If I go down, is it going to hurt me more than it is going to help me? And it seems like what KYT has done here is really made a helmet that not only looks amazing, but also has one of the best protections that you could look for but in a helmet. And the best part, price. <laughs> the price of this helmet yeah. is insane, man. It's cheap, right? It's really, it's Especially crazy. Especially we call it the Moto GP helmet. It's, it's the Moto GP spec. It's crazy. So it has all these certifications that everybody else has. Um, on top of it, we got the really old certification, which is DOT in the US. Right, if you're really familiar, if you're familiar with helmets and you're familiar with certifications, you understand that DOT is actually decades-old safety technology. Right? I wouldn't even call it technology, and it, it's not like the typical DOT that you would see. TJ's from Colorado. Yes, I live in Colorado, but we test. Uh, in the DOT lab in Tennessee, the legit one in the US. So you're getting all of that in a helmet and in a package that's extremely, extremely affordable. I don't know how they do it, to be honest, but they're doing it. And I, if I was a helmet manufacturer, I'd be really afraid of KYT. It seems like they're doing all the right things um, for riders and not just for their own, their own good. Hey, I'm yellow plate guy. Yeah, I'm a white plate guy, you know. Yeah. I used to live in the CBMA. Yeah. I'm a biker, man. Oh, yeah. Man. So, <laughs> I know nothing except the racing helmet. To be I'm, honest, you ask me about modular helmet, you ask me about adventure, I'm, I know nothing. But if you ask me the racing helmet, I know. Yeah. 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 I'm really happy that they have people like TJ. Uh, here, so why not, right? We got the saw dude here, right? And then we got a TT racer. It's crazy. All these people that are here for KYT, you know, they're not your typical salespeople, but the typical salesperson is not good at They're not good at this. Our team is so, like, we call ourselves like dumb and dumb, you know? We have a TT racer who has uh, the biggest ball in the world, right? And uh, I'm still riding motorcycle, even at 45, I love motorcycle. You know, I never stopped riding motorcycle, so I our team is like, like you know we are biker much more than the business guy yeah. <laughs> i love it man kyt you guys are doing something right um, definitely caught my eye for sure i'm glad tj stopped me and um, i got to see the homie zach finally got to meet him in person so i'm excited uh look out for my 
personal review, unpaid review of this helmet. They're gonna send me one. I'm gonna test it. it they me. said I can shit on it if it sucks. But from what I've seen so far, it's it's a helmet that's hard like to hate on. So thank you so much, man. Appreciate it, brother. So if you want, it's okay. Tomorrow you can come here and take it away. I can take it. Yes. I would have to come back tomorrow, though. Yeah. What time? Eleven. Not Eleven. Okay, Eleven Jennifer. Alright guys, we're driving around and uh, this car we rented unfortunately doesn't have a, a roof, so um, luckily the rain has stopped. We're in the middle of the strip. It's kind of packed. It's kind of packed. Look at that view. Woo! There's the Venetian. This is our first trip to Vegas, just me and, uh, me and her. Unfortunately, it's a business trip, but um, business business was good today. Now we're gonna make the most of it and get some, some beverages. Is it past this light? Okay. Very difficult to drive. Oh, uh, nope. You cannot turn turn left in here. Uh, we're gonna have to just U-turn. But look, Caesar's Palace. Nope, no U-turn. Look at Caesar's Palace, look at that. Oh, that's sick. How do you get your window up? <laughs> All right, we're going to the candy martini bar. Yeah, let's go. Let's go get some uh, really sugary drinks. Also, we look really dumb with our matching hoodies. Look, that's gummy bears, like real gummy bears. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> Check this out, this is the deserts of Nevada. This is fun. If you guys ever get a chance, go check out Arte Museum in Vegas, it's awesome. <laughs> All right guys, this is my final day at AM Expo. I'm just picking up my R6 headlights and I'm gonna go say what's up to a couple more people. All right, we got the headlight. Uh, I'm excited to put them on. Stay tuned for that video. What's up, bro? <laughs> Hey, you actually waited. I don't know oh, yeah. What's up? What's up? What's up? Good, yourself? Oh, good. Yes. What's your name? What's that? It's a uh, headlight. <laughs> for the oh, R6. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see, have you seen these? Where are you from, bro? I'm from Scotland. So you're from Scotland? No. Where are you from? Swiss. Switzerland. Switzerland? No, he's from here. Yeah. Oh, you guys are yeah. both in the US? No, I'm from San Diego. He's from, well, San Diego. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Wait, where are you from? Because I didn't really Seattle. know about you before Seattle. you. Yeah, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. My uncle's from there. All right, Natalie, show us your. Oh, that is really cool. Yeah, thank you. So, this is from iLights, and this is an ILM helmet, just so you guys know. So, basically, you want me to put it on? Sure. But, what's this? Like, I can see like Google Maps and YouTube on here, like right there. And it's pretty cool when you ride, because it's like, you're riding, you're looking at the road, and then you're like, oh, where am I going? Okay, cool. And you don't have to like look down, so. It's dope, it's pretty cool. That's and amazing. Dope too. This is kind of big though, what do you think? Yes, but it looks really good. Like, yeah, if it's green, it will match this. And honestly, I'm not too bothered by like, the like the thing. I think it's pretty, I don't know, it looks good. Yeah. It looks better than okay. the car, sorry. <laughs> no, you're <Yeah>. fine. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That's sick. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about being a content creator? Um, good question. Uh, the opportunities. And my hairstyle. Yeah. That I ride. Yeah. Um, no, the opportunities, meeting people, the network, um, and just like it brings people together, you know, it's like sharing a passion. So like I meet a lot of people online and then I get to meet them, you know, in person. So All right, so off? this guy has been hunting me apparently. I got a notification on my Instagram. I was here yesterday as I went to meet up with Zach and then like I got a notification on my Instagram. Somebody had tagged me. It was uh, it was her, All right, Natalie. And then apparently this guy, and then I was looking through my like tags and DMs and all that. And this, this dude, man, told me he was from Scotland. Turns out he's just a Filipino guy. <laughs> I'm actually Scottish. I lived in Scotland for a few years. But That's I've been awesome, hunting man. this guy for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was stalking him. Hell yeah. I'm like a life stalker. But he likes my mom more, so. Yeah. Everybody uh, likes mom, my mom more. Mom, if you're watching this, love you. 
<laughs> All right. I got to uh, I got to shout Victor out. All right, so Victor, he was like, "Can you send me the picture that we just took? Took a selfie or something together?" No, we took like a group photo, right? Yeah. So I guess he follows me. I was like, "What are you following?" I pulled up his Instagram. And I was like, bro, you don't even fucking follow me on IG. <laughs> I was like, what do you follow me? He's like, bro, I'm YouTube. old school. Yeah, YouTube. YouTube. I appreciate the love. Yeah, I yeah, definitely, really... man. Yeah, good meeting you in person. One second, one second. Yeah. I gotta give you this. Just watch it. <laughs> no way, man. Yeah, you're the first one to get it. Awesome. So <laughs> Nobody's it. gotten it yet, bro. So yeah, I appreciate thank it. You. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate the love. Yeah. Thank yeah. So much, definitely. Man. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah. So. Salamat. He's got the first brood hoodie. <laughs> Straight off my back, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, brood, man. I heard Hell about yeah, it. Hell yeah, bro. Rope less dude. Hell yeah. He's brood. Hell yeah. yeah. Thank you. It, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. Appreciate the support. Yeah, bro. definitely. I'll see you later. See you. See you, bro. Okay, so we're back from Vegas now. I just want to take the time to shout out everybody that stopped me. People in the industry that knew who Adobe Moto was, including Cardo. They even sent me the Cardo Pack Talk Ed. So shout out to Cardo for sending me this. I hope they contact me to do a full review. I made a short video on Instagram and TikTok of like my initial impressions of this. Seems to be a great product. I did get a new headlight for the R6, which is right here. We will install it in a future video. But I wanted to talk about what happened on the way out of Amex Expo. I was stopped once again by TJ from KYT. And he told me one of the most humbling things I've ever heard about Adobe Moto. I want I wanted to sum it up at the end of this video because I thought it was really important. He said, I've been watching you for a while and even though I'm in the industry, I still watch a lot of your videos. I love how raw and real your reviews are. And I feel like it's something nobody else is doing. And I said, man, I really appreciate that. I don't get everything right, but I feel like I get a majority of things correct. And the moment I do one thing wrong, that's what people get hung up on. And he gave me a similar experience of him being in the industry. He said certain companies don't want to work with KYT because they don't believe that they're a premium brand. I don't know how much you could tell from this video, but KYT is a very passionate team of people and the big companies here in North America that don't want to work with KYT I think they're missing out I know TJ works a lot in development and you can tell this guy really cares about his product but that wasn't the most humbling thing he told me one of the most humbling things I've ever heard in my life was TJ telling me how proud he was of what I'm doing with Adobe Moto he said it's so nice to see somebody who looks like me take on social media and be so real and genuine and so raw as I've been growing Adobe Moto it's been a battle between vanilla type of content versus just continuing Continuing to do my thing. I want to be brandable and I want to work with more brands. And unfortunately, in this country, sometimes I just don't look the part. And it's funny because we got to talking and TJ said, you know, even though I am where I am, I haven't been in this country long, but I still struggle in this country because of my color. TJ, if you're watching this, I want you to know that KYT Americas has my full support. I can't wait to take the KYT on a test ride and give you the no bullshit Adobe Moto review. For everybody watching and supporting, I appreciate you guys. And one final thing, I'm down to like two videos a week on YouTube. I'm getting really antsy because I'm a creator. I just want to create. Let me know if you guys are cool with two videos or you want me to go back to one video every other day. I love you mofos. On the next episode of Adobe Moto. Do you even know how to drive a manual? No. <laughs> I went to break because there was cars in front of me mm -hmm. and then it went like this. <laughs> and then he was like, he was like, like oh, oh shit. Right, yeah. um, Damage doesn't look too bad.